Well, Chris, it's been five short years from my point of view, but maybe a little longer for you at the for this great project. Yes, but it has gone by very quickly. Um, you were here at Garnet Valley Ranch when nothing was on the property. Mm -hmm. uh, we had actually brought in a um, terroir specialist, Dr. Pedro Pera from Chile, and we were walking through the property trying to determine what to plant where. Well, why did you uh, start that way? Were you, <laughs> you could have bought other places or done other things. We could have, but we wanted to start from organic uh, from day one, and we wanted a piece of property that no one had farmed before. And we wanted a large piece of property, which as you know in the Okanagan is really hard to come by. Yeah. And we wanted to plant it from scratch. So we had actually planted uh, Switchback in uh, 2006. And we made some errors. They weren't fatal errors, but we made errors. And so we knew from that that we needed to do it properly and plan from scratch. The site is somewhat unconventional but beautiful. You know, people normally go in a vineyard and have all these squares. You've done something much more interesting here. And yes, first of all, we didn't contour the land at all. The rule that we were working with was three, uh, three to six inches in, in any one direction, up or down. And so we've used the natural landscape of, the, of what we were given. Right. And so you can see that we have uh, individual vineyard uh, blocks. Yeah. Like and, islands. Like islands, and in between we've left corridors for wildlife because the environmental uh, impact that we've uh, put on this land by farming it, uh, we, we feel a great responsibility to counterbalance that. You'll see that we have a herd of sheep that lives on this property is from time to time. You'll see them moving around into the various vineyards and uh, great Pyrenees that we have are protecting the sheep from coyote and bear. And then there's deer that come and go too, seasonally. So it's a very busy place. Did you ever think that organic would be in your future, say 20 years ago? Or? I really didn't. And I think I must credit my visits to Chile and the time I spent there at places like the Leda Valley and with uh, producers like Emiliana. Mm -hmm. And I saw that it was possible to organically farm 10,000 hectares. Yeah. And if you can do that, there's absolutely no excuse for not being able to farm 100 acres in the Okanagan. And I really came back with that mindset. And then meeting uh, Pedro Pera, who was responsible for a lot of that infrastructure going in uh, to Chile. And also Alberto Antonini from Tuscany, our consulting winemaker. The two of them are fundamentally um, dialed in on organics and uh, minimal intervention winemaking. And so we really embrace that um, from the start. You've also chosen a site which I just love the altitude here. Now we're we're standing at about 600 meters, but you climb to the top vineyards over to about 680 meters, which is quite a height in <laughs> Canadian winemaking. It certainly is, and so far it's proven to be um, to our advantage. And your friend the lakes just over the hill. So yes, actually it's really interesting because if you look at a map, the uh, vineyard is situated where the lake turns, mm -hmm. and uh, and so the wind from the lake and the thermals from the lake just come right over the mountain. It comes down and moves through this property. It does a few things. It raises the temperature when uh, in the cooler months and it also helps us uh, battle uh, mildew and other uh, disease pressures. Uh, and there's just a constant um, beautiful and consistent temperature uh, on this property. You know what, it was very, very fortunate that we stumbled across this piece of property. 320 acres, you really don't find that in the Okanagan in today's world. Now eventually the, the fruit that you're growing is going to end up uh, down at Haywire. What kind of wines will we see out of Garnet? What will the mix be here and what, what, what's your plan? Well, what we have planted right now is Pinot Noir, Chardonnay and Riesling. So those will be the first to come in. Uh, this coming year we're planting Chenin Blanc and Gamay Noir. I, I'm absolutely loving Gamay Noir from the Okanagan Valley and uh, we're going to be planting a significant part of this property to that variety. You'll also be seeing wines that um, we feel really have a signature of, of the Okanagan, fresh, juicy, vibrant. Not big extracted wines, that's not really what we feel our valley does well. Every year we seem to have some new arrival. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this year, four more amphora, um, 14 more concrete tanks. So really when you look around, we have all sorts of different uh, vessels for fermenting and aging. Mm -hmm. And that just gives us options. Size matters, we have large ones, we have small ones, so we have variable lid. You've got eggs, you've got... We have 
funnels. We have uh, chimneys. We have uh, yeah. you name it. We have it. We have oak barrels. And um, even a new wall of tanks in the back, yes, which are new, very impressive. A new wall of concrete. So for us, these are just options, and uh, we can put. Uh, into each vessel what is best suited to be in that. So Chris, uh, one of the mantras here is less or more. We hear a lot about that from Alberto Antonini. Can you explain how that works at Haywire? Well, it really starts in the vineyard with uh, organic farming. And then when, that, uh, when those grapes come into the crush pad, doing as little as we can to them so that it expresses the vineyard to its best capability. We're not adding anything into the wine during the yeah. winemaking process. What we need to do is strip it down and get to the basic of what the Okanagan is. That's really what it means for us. It's not Bordeaux and it's not Napa, it's the Okanagan. It is the Okanagan, but what is that? I mean, so many people have been spent years emulating other regions and trying to uh, chase that story. And so we're still at a stage where we need to find out what our own story is. And, uh, you know, we're part way through defining that narrative, but it's a long way off from being something that's going to turn into a movie, <laughs> <laughs> definitely.